One minute your child is running around the playground having the best time. The next they stop coughing, struggling to catch their breath. Is it just a cold, allergies, or is it something else going on? As a parent, watching your child struggle to breathe is scary. You might be wondering, does my child have asthma? If they do, what does that mean for their future and how can I help them breathe easier every day? I'm Dr. Mona Amin, a board certified pediatrician and mom, and today I'm breaking down key things you need to know about asthma, whether you're wondering if your child has it or they've already been diagnosed and you're looking for answers. Let's clear up the confusion so you can feel confident managing your child's breathing. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on videos that help you navigate your child's health, development, and behavior with confidence. Let's dive in. Asthma is a chronic condition that affects the lungs and airways, making it harder to breathe. Think of it like trying to breathe through a tiny straw. Difficult, right? That's what an asthma flare-up can feel like for a child. Here's what happens. The airways become inflamed, swollen, and narrowed, leading to wheezing, coughing, and shortness of breath. According to the CDC, over 6 million kids in the United States have asthma. And while there's no cure, asthma can be managed effectively with the right approach. And here are some common misconceptions. Misconception number one, asthma is just mild and kids will grow out of it. It is true that some children may see symptoms disappear. Asthma can persist into adulthood for some children. Even if symptoms fade, triggers like colds or allergens can bring it back later in life for some individuals. Misconception number two, if my child isn't wheezing, they don't have asthma. Asthma doesn't always present with wheezing. Chronic cough, fatigue during play, or frequent nighttime coughs can also be signs. Misconception number three, my child only has asthma when they exercise, so they don't need treatment. Exercise-induced asthma is a real thing. I actually had it as well, but it's just one type. Many kids experience symptoms triggered by allergens, weather, or viral infections for their asthma as well. Misconception number four, using an inhaler too much makes asthma worse. Inhalers help controlled asthma. However, if your child needs their rescue inhaler more than a few times a week, if they're needing it frequently at night, it may mean their asthma isn't well controlled and their treatment plan should be adjusted. Asthma symptoms can be set off by many different things and figuring out what affects your child is key to keeping their symptoms under control. If you or a close family member have asthma or allergies, your child may be more likely to develop asthma because it can run in families. But environmental triggers play a big role too. Things like pollen, dust mites, pet dander, mold, smoke, and strong smells can set off asthma symptoms. Weather changes like cold air or sudden shifts in temperature can also make breathing harder for kids with asthma. Some kids have exercise-induced asthma, meaning they start wheezing or struggling to breathe after running or playing sports. And for younger kids, even a simple cold or viral infection can make asthma symptoms worse. Avoiding triggers when possible and using the right medications, which I'll be covering in the next video, can make all the difference in managing asthma. So if you don't want to miss that video, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. A simple way to remember the symptoms of asthma is to remember the acronym wheezing. Wheezing, that whistling sound when your child breathes, like a tiny harmonica playing in their chest. Hoarseness or persistent coughing, that nagging cough that won't quit even when they're sick, especially at night. Easy fatigue during play, where they get winded after just a few minutes of running around or exercising. Exertion-related shortness of breath, huffing and puffing more than other kids after mild activity. Z, nocturnal symptoms, when coughing or breathing troubles wake them up at night. Intermittent symptoms, one day they're fine, the next day they're struggling, it can feel very unpredictable. Nasal flaring or labored breathing when their nostrils work overtime or you notice their ribs pulling in with each breath. Gasping for air, the scariest sign when they're really struggling to breathe and need help fast. An asthma attack happens when symptoms suddenly get way worse because of inflammation and airway tightening. Triggers like allergens, smoke, exercise, or infections can set it off, making it much harder to breathe. An asthma attack happens when symptoms suddenly worsen due to airway inflammation or tightening. During an attack, your child might struggle to get air in, wheeze heavily or cough nonstop, appear anxious or panicked, or have trouble speaking in full sentences. If your child is gasping for air, if their lips or nails are turning blue or gray, if their ribs pull in with each breath, or if their heart rate is too fast or weak, it's important to get evaluated. And remember, I have a really great video on my channel here about signs of respiratory distress. Asthma can be life-threatening. When in doubt, always seek medical attention. So how do you know if your child's asthma is under control? If they're not having frequent symptoms, can play normally, and aren't waking up at night coughing, their asthma is likely well-managed. But if they're needing their rescue inhaler multiple times a week, especially at nighttime, it might be time to adjust their treatment plan. 
And again, I'll be covering that in my next video, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. A common question parents ask is if my child had RSV or wheezing illness as a baby, does that mean they have asthma or will develop asthma? The answer, not always, but it can increase the risk. Young children, especially those under two, often wheeze when they get viral infections like RSV because their airways are small and sensitive. For some kids, this wheezing is temporary and fades as they grow and their anatomy develops. But for others, especially those with a family history of asthma or allergies, early wheezing could be an early sign of developing asthma later in childhood. If your child has had multiple episodes of wheezing with illness, it's worth discussing with your pediatrician to monitor their breathing and determine whether they may have reactive airway disease or early asthma. Another term parents often hear is reactive airway disease, which can be confusing. RAD isn't the same as asthma, but they can be related. Doctors use the term reactive airway disease when young children have wheezing episodes, especially after viral infections, but are too young for a formal asthma testing like spirometry exams. Some kids outgrow RAD as their airways mature, while others continue having symptoms and are later diagnosed with asthma. If your child frequently wheezes, has trouble with colds, turning into lingering coughs, or seems to struggle more than other kids with breathing, it's worth discussing long-term asthma management with your clinician. Diagnosing asthma isn't always straightforward, especially in smaller children. Doctors rely on a big picture approach, asking about symptoms, medical history, and whether asthma or allergies run in the family. If they suspect asthma, they may recommend further testing, like a spirometry test, to get a clearer picture. A spirometry test is basically a lung workout. Your child takes a deep breath and then blows out hard and as fast as they can into a special device called a spirometer. The child is usually older than five to be able to cooperate with this test. This helps doctors see how strong their lungs are and whether their airways are tightening, both key in diagnosing asthma and tracking how well treatment is working. For younger kids who can't do this test yet, doctors may prescribe an inhaler and monitor symptom improvement over time. They might also order allergy tests or chest x-rays to rule out other possible causes of breathing issues. Since asthma symptoms can sometimes look a lot like a cold or other conditions, getting a solid diagnosis can take some time. Kids with asthma should have checkups every three to six months to track symptoms and adjust treatment if needed. This can include escalating treatment or also downgrading treatments. Staying on top of these visits can make a huge difference in keeping asthma under control. It's so important to know when asthma symptoms go from manageable to we need help now. Go to the ER or seek immediate medical help if your child has severe shortness of breath or is struggling to breathe even at rest. Has lip, skin, or nails turning blue or gray, this means they're not getting enough oxygen. Has chest pain or nonstop coughing that isn't improving and can't seem to be getting air in. Shows nasal flaring or ribs pulling in with each breath, this means they're working too hard to breathe. And has a heart rate that suddenly becomes weak or too fast. Asthma can be life-threatening, so if you're ever unsure, it's always better to play it safe and get them checked out. Trust your gut, you know your child the best. The bottom line, asthma is a common but manageable condition in children. Understanding triggers, symptoms, and treatment options can help your child lead a normal, active life. Know the common asthma triggers for your child. Recognize early warning signs before an attack. Ensure your child's asthma is well controlled with the right management and treatment and that you have your medications on hand. And seek medical attention immediately during severe flare-ups. What's one thing about asthma that you wish you had learned sooner? Let me know in the comments below and my team of medical professionals will respond. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up sign, share it and subscribe for more content tailored to help you understand your child's health, development and behavior with confidence. And as a reminder, I'll be doing a part two of asthma focusing on management and treatment next time. I hope I brought more confidence into your parenting journey. Stay informed, stay empowered, and I'll see you all next time. Stay well.